Hello everyone, Kotongane, the native code here. In this video, we are going to look at how we apply Bernoulli's theorem for a tapered pipe that is at an angle with the horizontal, right? Now the problem reads as follows. A tapered pipe of length 15 meters in, is inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal. The pipe diameter tapers from 180 to 300 millimeters in the direction of flow. Assume the flow to be upwards. Quantity of water flowing through the pipe is 60 liters per second. The pressure gauge at the lower end of the pipe shows a reading of 200 kilopascals. Right. Now, as they've indicated, the flow of water right, is upwards, meaning the lower end of the pipe right, is the entry and the upper end of the pipe is the exit. So the water is flowing in this direction. Right. The water is flowing in this direction. Right. Well, they told us that much. Right. Now, meaning the lower end of the pipe, we're going to name as 1, and the upper end of the pipe has been named as 2. Right. Now, if you look closely here, right, if you look closely, you have somewhat of a right angle triangle that is formed whenever you look at a pipe that is at an incline, right? Right? Now here's your right angle triangle, right? The side that is the hypotenuse of the right angle triangle is essentially the length of the pipe, right? And then we have that angle 30 degrees and the side opposite the angle, right, is our H2, right? So to get H2, we make use of this right angle triangle and use um, the corresponding um, trig ratio, right? Then let's see what else we've been given. Right, so whenever you have a pipe as an incline, right, you have to draw this right angle triangle, right, so that you know how to calculate H2, right, so unless you haven't been given the angle, right, and they've actually stated what H2 is, right, so in this case we have the angle and you don't have H2, so we have to calculate H2 by making use of trig ratios right now let's see what else we've been given All right so we have d1 remember one is the lower end of the pipe two is the upper end of the pipe so d1 right is the 180 millimeters so 0 0.18 meters d2 is equal to the 0 0.3 meters right they said the pressure gate at the, at the lower end, the lower end being one, so P1 is 200 kilopascals, right? We have the length of the pipe, it's 15 meters. We have the discharge of flow rate, which is 60 liters per second. Right, now remember, as far as as far as the flow rate, the flow rate has to be in cubic meters per second. So converting the 60 liters per second to cubic meters per second, right? You need to divide this by 60, by 1000. Right? Now if you divide this by 1000, you're going to get 0 0.06 cubic meters per second, right? Now we do not have V1, we do not have V2, right? Now, H1, we take as being equal to zero. We always take the lower end of the pipe as being on the ground, right? So the ground is our frame of reference, meaning that H1 is actually equal to zero, right? So H1 is equal to zero. Mm, what else? So we do not have 
P2 as well. Right. Now let's look at the questions. Calculate the pressure at the upper end. So they're looking for P2. Now we know that in applying Bernoulli's or in using uh, Bernoulli's equations, right, we need to have pressure energy. We need to have kinetic energy. And we need to have uh, potential energy. Right, so to have kin to, to have kinetic energy, we need to have all our velocities. So the velocity at the low end as well as the velocity at the upper end, and then we also need to have our heights, right? So the heights being h1 and h2 for potential energy, right? Meaning, since we have h1, we know is equal to zero, right? For the lower end, h2, we are going to use trig ratios to calculate h2, right? Now, because H2 is actually opposite the angle and we have the hypotenuse, it means we need to use sine. So sine, sine 30, right, is equal to, now using sine, say opposite of the hypotenuse. So the side opposite the angle is H2, right, and the hypotenuse is the length of the pipe which is 15 meters right then solving for h2 h2 will be equal to 15 sine 30. now punching that in your calculators you're going to get 7.5 meters right so now we have h2 right so we have h1 as well as h2 now we need to have v1 and v2 right so once you have that then we can apply binolis right so in calculating v1 and v2 because we have the discharge of flow rate right we know the flow rate is constant throughout the water's motion right so the q is the same or the flow rate is the same at the lower end as it is at the upper end right so we can use the q to calculate v right so in calculating v1 simply so say q is equal to a1 v1 right then we solve for v1 by dividing by a1 both sides right so v1 is equal to so this will be q times 4 over pi times d1 squared right so v1 will be equal to now q is equal to 0 comma 0 0.06 times the 4 over pi times now d1 was 0 0.18 right so this will be 0 0.18 squared then if you punch this in your calculators you're going to get 2 comma 358 meters per second right so that is v1 right and then in calculating v2 right to calculate v2 we use this very same formula so v2 essentially will be equal to q times 4 over the pi times d2 squared right no q remains constant so 0 comma 0 06 times the 4 over pi times the 300 millimeters which is 0 comma 3 0 comma 3 squared now punching that in our calculators we are going to get 0 comma 849 meters per second right so now we've attained both v1 and v2 right meaning since we have h1 and h2 as well and we have p1 right we're only missing p2 so we can apply Bernoulli's theorem now by using one of the um, Bernoulli's equations, right? Now we are looking for pressure, so we're gonna use energy per unit volume. Right, so P1 plus half rho V1 squared plus rho G H1 is equal to P2 plus 
half rho v2 squared plus rho gh2 right now we know h1 is equal to zero so this will come to zero right we have all the other values right for all our other energies so solving for p2 p2 will be equal to p1 plus half rho v1 squared minus half rho v2 squared minus rho gh2 right now substituting right p1 was equal to 200 kilopascals right so essentially we have 200 times a thousand right to convert kilo pascals to pascals plus the row of water is 1000 times v1 v1 is 2,358 squared minus half row of water times v2 which is 0, 0,849 squared right minus the row of water times g 9,81 times h2 which we calculated and got 7,5 right now punching this in our calculators p2 will be equal to 128,845 kilopascals right so that way we have We've attained P2, right? And P2 is 128,845 kilopascals, right? Which, if you look here, makes a lot of sense, right? For a typical case where you have a pipe that is at an incline, right? We would expect P1 to be greater than P2 right why because remember what governs essentially um, pressure in a fluid right remember pressure in a fluid is equal to rho gh right so we basically look at the height of fluid above the point we are looking at meaning what meaning if you're looking at the lower end of the pipe, right? We look at what is the column of fluid above the lower end of the pipe, right? Now, if you look at it from that perspective, there is obviously more column of fluid above point one than there is above point two, right? There is more column of fluid above, there is more column of fluid above the lower end than there is right in the upper end right so because the age in the lower end will be significantly bigger than the age in the upper end right that is what essentially is going to influence our pressure right now there are cases right where if there is a significant change in velocity right if there is a significant change in velocity between the lower end and the upper end right so the change in kinetic energy if the change in kinetic energy is so significant that it influences the pressure energy then in those cases you would find that the pressure at the lower end right is lower than that the pressure at the upper end right otherwise in typical cases like this one where there isn't much or where there isn't a significant change in kinetic energy between the lower end and upper end right so when looking at v1 and v2 right the change in kinetic energy doesn't really influence right the pressure energy so again in cases where for instance 
maybe v1 would be say 19 meters per second and v2 is like 0 0.8 meters per second right in that case you can see there is a significant change in kinetic energy right so to maintain the conservation of energy that is going to influence the what the pressure energy right so that's going to influence the pressure energy at the lower end as well as the pressure energy at the upper end where you would actually find that the pressure at the lower end is lower than the pressure at the upper end because the change in pressure energy right is influenced by the change in kinetic energy right hopefully that wasn't confusing right if you have questions about it you can or we can have a conversation in the comment section right right now though let us look at the second question right talk with the change in kinetic energy of the liquid per unit mass over the length of the pipe so they want us to calculate the change in kinetic energy per unit mass right so number two they want us to calculate the change in kinetic energy right so change in kinetic energy we know is equal to final minus initial so half mv2 squared minus half mv1 squared right now we have common factors here so you can simply say change in kinetic energy is essentially equal to common factors as a half and the mass so half m into v2 squared minus v1 squared right now they did mention that we need to calculate the change in kinetic energy per unit mass right so the change in energy must be in terms of per unit mass meaning what meaning that we are going to divide by what by the mass both sides right so that goes so the change in kinetic energy per unit mass is essentially equal to is essentially equal to v2 squared minus v1 squared right over 2 so now we substitute right so v2 remember was 0 0.849 squared minus v1 which was 2.358 squared all of this over 2 Right. Now, if you punch this in your calculators, you are going to get negative two comma four two right joules per kg. Right. Now, remember, kinetic energy is an energy, right? So it's a scalar quantity; doesn't really have direction. The negative here indicates that we are losing kinetic energy as the water flows right so the negative essentially tells us that as the water is flowing from the lower end to the upper end right it is essentially decelerating if, it de if it's decelerating it means that it is losing um, kinetic energy so the negative indicates that the water is losing kinetic energy as it moves from the lower end to the upper end right i hope you find this video helpful right if you have any questions as i've said post them in the comment section and let's talk about it right now for a vertical tapered pipe right so if the pipe is vertical instead of being at an incline right we apply Benoli's essentially the same way right so you say you have an inclined pipe right if you have an inclined 
right so if your pipe is a vertical inclined pipe right so for a a vertical inclined pipe not inclined for your vertical pipe so for a vertical that's what I'm looking for tapered yes so for a vertical tapered pipe right we would apply Pinoli's uh, theorem similarly as we would to an inclined pipe right now as far as right our H's right if this is the ground so the lower end the H will be equal to zero so let's just say for instance if they say that the waters right enters from this side and goes in this direction right making the bottom one and the upper end of the pipe two so h1 will be equal to zero and h2 right h2 for a vertical tapered pipe will essentially be equal to it will be equal to the length of the pipe right so if that's the length of the pipe that will essentially be your h2 so for vertical tapered pipe right h2 or the height at the upper end right is exactly equal to the length of the pipe right even in this case right typically you will you would expect p1 to be greater than p2 because again we have to think about how we measure pressure right pressure is rho gh essentially right we look at the column of fluid above the point you're looking at so the column of fluid above point one would obviously be much greater than the column of fluid above point two right and then of course similarly like how i explained with a a tapered pipe that is at an and that, that is at an angle right the pressure could also be influenced by the change in kinetic energy so if the change in kinetic energy so the difference between right the lower end of the pipe and the upper end of the pipe in terms of velocity if it is a significant amount then that could influence right which pressure is bigger in terms of p1 and p2 right but typically p1 right so the pressure at the lower end is normally greater than the pressure at the upper end because of how we measure pressure right hopefully you find this video helpful to you right if you have any questions post them in the comment section and let's talk about it right see you in the next one